Welcome back to Sunless Skies. The last episode we explored some of the new stuff added in the Vagabond update. Mostly, we encountered the London Monitors, basically the sniper ships, and also St. Anthony's Lighthouse around Whirlberry Juxtamare. For now, I think I'm almost done with Albion for the moment, but one last thing I want to do is go to the Floating Parliament, attempt to pass a new law, and also finish two prospects there. Let's do that, and along the way, let's stop at the Wit and Vinegar Lumber Company, because I got some confiscated contraband on me that I've gotten from the London Monitors that I want to sell. At Wit and Vinegar, we can sell the Firkin of Red Honey for 115 and the Hogshead of Starshine for 250 I think the... Mm, Red honey. Is that what we can buy here? No, it's illicit literature. Yeah, whatever they sell at this region is what you can... S or whatever they... Yeah, whatever they sell in this region is what you can sell for a very bad price. To prevent you from just, you know, buying a crap ton of it here and then just selling it back to them. But you get a profit if you take it to another region's place. Surprised the Firkin of Red Honey so little, I guess it's just not worth nearly as much as the Hogshead of Starshine. At the Floating Parliament, just did some of the terror reduction stuff. Let's finish the prospects. Five things of Bronzewood. Bonus Ministry Stamp Permit. Three things of Munitions. Bonus Moment of Inspiration. Very nice. Tea. Yes, I'll take that. Let's disrupt the proceedings with a perfect pangolin once again. I forgot what we get from that. Salon stewed gossip. No, explore is not the right one. Visit my department. Make a new law. Alright, let's see how this goes. Oh right, they said the more laws you pass, the harder it's going to be to, like, pass these checks. 100%, 98%, 100%. Okay, we should be good with everything except hearts. Dig up dirt on arrival MP. Tenth of Parliament supports me. Yeah, what's hearts? 83%? That's still not bad. Invent a good sob story to sway opinion. Conduct a bribery campaign. I don't. Mm, I don't think that one did anything. It still is only a fifth. I think. Back to the sob story. Will it do something now, or are they just never going to do anything? No, it did something. Maybe there's just a chance that it won't do anything. Deliver a stirring speech. Under half of parliament. And that's all we're going to get, 48%. Ooh, success! Awesome. Due to your performance, you're assigned a new department. And then I assume... Yeah, every new bill that I get, I'm going to have to take back to London so they can ceremonially tear it up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just a ceremony. I don't suppose I've been given any, uh, any keys? No. It would tell me if I've been given any of those keys. Just return to London and look who's here. The amiable vagabond. Um, we'll talk with them in a second. Something else I want to do first. Let's hand in our new law, the throne of ours. All right. Yeah. Great. Same thing as usual. Ripped it. Burned it. Oh, let me repair my ship as well. I was only hurt by a couple of hit points. And turn in port reports. Alright, recruit the amiable vagabond. You find him waiting serenely at St. Dominic's station, clay pipe clamped between his teeth. 
He claims to be an expert in snake wrangling, thimble twisting, and stick swinging. He professes to be a psychologist, mythologist, and escapologist. He boasts he can tell stories that'll haunt you until you die, and play tunes that'll make stones dance. If all that fails to entice you, he supposes he could turn his hand to signaling. <laughs> Alright, so they are someone who will increase my hearts by four, my veils by four, and my bohemia by one. Hmm, that's an interesting stat split, because I think before this, all people that you recruit give you six of one stat and then two in something else. But this one's an even 4-4. Four, four. Two sky stories? I think I can swing that. I have 117. <laughs> he couldn't care less for your sovereigns. He wants to swap stories. When you accept him aboard, he pulls a grimy bottle of something opaque and unidentifiable from his inner coat pocket and takes a long, celebratory swig. I hope you're not having second thoughts already, he says, and roars with laughter. He has no luggage to speak of, just the bindle over his shoulder, and a fiddle in a battered leather case. Once he has slung both onto his bed, he heads to the galley and starts performing card tricks and telling ribald jokes at the crew. Most find him charming. Several make their apologies and abscond. Welcome aboard! Do you have your own quest line? I assume so. <clears throat> Swap stories. Three sky stories. Unlocked when you do not have the Vagabond's Obligation. What is that? You can usually be found in good spirits and good company, gambling, laughing, playing a tune. Failing that, he will be deep in conversation with some cornered crew member or other, quizzing them about their personal history with every sign of sincere interest. If left alone, he grows restless. He sleeps late and rises early, eager to be among the crew once more. Swap stories. He is an inexhaustible geyser of unlikely anecdotes. The Vagabond's stories often feature larger-than-life characters from his loose community of vagrants. People with names like Sooty Jim or the Chimney Kid, and who collectively call themselves Skylarks. They hitch rides on locomotives, sometimes without permission, and scrounge a living from port to port. I'm their king, says the Vagabond without humility. I taught half of them how to tie a bindle. He pauses, sipping from his flask. We hold monthly gatherings at Port Avon. You should accompany me to the next one. You'll never meet a more interesting bundle of folks. Accompany the Vagabond on a visit to his fellow Skylarks at Port Avon. Okay, well that'll be easy to do, because as soon as I come back, I'll basically be at Port Avon when I go to the Reach. Ask him to play you a tune. Before you've finished your sentence, the Vagabond is already tucking the fiddle under his bearded chin. Want me to break your heart? he asks. The Vagabond's fiddle is scuffed and scratched. Looks like it's been broken several times and pieced back together inexpertly. And yet, the tune which he coaxes from it is a soaring, searing, soul-stinging lament. It reminds you of precious things you've nearly forgotten, and raw things you'd rather forget. By the time the Vagabond is finished, he has tears in his eyes, and so do half the crew. The silence rings like a bell, and the Vagabond laughs and the spell is broken. I decided to visit the Royal Society to see if there were any new designs that I could get, especially since I now have 75 mirrors. And, well, I found some stuff, but not exactly what I wanted, because the thing I wanted the most was some sort of an assaying device, because I've been, I've had mining stuff on my ship pretty much forever, and I haven't assayed in a long time. I want to go back to assaying, but... There seems to be no tool at all in the Royal Society that allows you to assay. Nothing. Which is really surprising. They've got good stuff for mining, they have good stuff for canning, which I actually bought. It's a nice tier 4, but nothing for assaying. It's strange. I guess if I want to assay, I'm going to have to give up some other stuff. 
Um, but yeah, this tier four Osiris patented divider, a wheeze of the renowned Blue Kingdom expert, Sir Francis Fitzwilliam, this ingenious cannery cuts every morsel into exactly 13 parts and comes equipped with its own set of glass jars for easy collection. So allows me to butcher, of course, and gives me eight hold. Which fireplace would I have right now? It's going to double my hold and reduce my armor by five. That armor, not a big deal. Double the hold. Cool. But again, I want to assay, so I'm going to switch that out next time I can, I guess. Oh, I also bought a couple mechanical Turks. Um, they're not particularly good, but they occupy an auxiliary slot. And most importantly, they give me one hidden compartment each. So in case I need to smuggle like nine things across a region, this might allow me to reach that. All right, back at London, I'm going to go ahead and replace my really, really good Osiris patented divider with just a plain assaying device. There goes eight of my hold. Also... I'm going to replace the Saint Fire with my good old friend, Her Renewed Majesty's Jubilee. That's the uh, partially homing missiles that have an extremely long range, and you can choose when to blow them up. Even though they've just buffed this weapon here, and I like that, I just realized that they also buffed the Jubilee. I think it did 15 damage before, now it does 20. So it's also even better. And even before the buffs for either of these weapons, it was definitely the safer weapon before. If you're patient and maintain a good distance, it was probably the safest, no, definitely the safest weapon I've ever used. So let's do that. Feels weird because I'm actually going down a tier, but it's worth it. Just on my way to the Reach Relay, and I've come across this. What is this? The storm that speaks. It's not marked on the map, though. It's marked up here. So that made me think it was like a permanent one place, I guess. Guess it happens in multiple places? Let's try talking with them again. Speak to the storm. Failure, as always. Now it's displeased, so let's please it with some immaculate souls. And in the end, we lost a bunch of stuff and gained nothing. Goodbye. Back in the Reach, I was heading to Magdalene's to get rid of another level of nightmares. Just came across Braley Rock. I think they must have added the ability to investigate this place. Uh, I don't even know if it was added in the Vagabond update. It might have been added in the Wayfair one before that. Because I can investigate it now. I wasn't able to do that before, right? No. When settlers arrived in the Reach, miners flocked to this frozen rock lured by the promise of hours stored in its core. An eruption of Cantangri has left it in its current mangled state. A makeshift graveyard stands at the lip of the rock, a memorial and a warning. Pay your respects, light the lanterns. 100% chance of success. The cold has snuffed the lanterns. Lanterns doused by the sleet mark the ramshackle graves. Relighting them would commemorate the dead, but might disturb any Cantangri that still slumber here. You're able to dig out a dozen or more lanterns from the muddy sleet. You find tinder to light them and rope to lash them to the wooden posts that mark the graves. Some of the posts are marked with black crosses, indicating a member of the Windward Corp of Overmen and Shot Firers. A stoker sings a brief and dirge-like hymn. Gained the Tackety's gratitude, terror fell. My snuffing of lanterns quality is now 1929. What? 
I could attempt to mine for unclaimed hours if I had munitions. Stokers stoke the boilers, navigators consult charts. All are eager to be away from this forsaken rock. I guess if you failed, then it would bring a lot of cantankery out. Oh, hey, memorial. Uh, do, do, do. Mm, it sounds like this is a memorial involving the storm that speaks. So I might be able to get the storm that speaks good attention with this. Let's deliver a eulogy myself. Oh, damn. Nice. Yeah, I got the positive attention of the storm that speaks. And I think we've had this happen once before, so I'm not going to read that. Along the way, I've been testing out my... Oh my god, there's so many good negri. I've been testing out the new Jubilee now that it's been upgraded. It's really good. Like, god, even the unupgraded version is so much better than the other weapon, just in terms of being able to kill enemies fast and safely. But now that it's been upgraded, it's just even better. I just killed it off camera. It's so good. Prize the worldly artifacts from between its plates. Thank you. Two Magdalens. Red Magdalens. Yeah, let's get rid of another level of nightmares. How many inspiration is it going to take? <laughs> it costs five now. But I have eight. I think it's worth it. Who is there? Her renewed majesty. Now my nightmares are simply disquieting instead of awful or all-consuming or whatever the other levels are. Let's explore the region's tears now that we can. Almost there. Oh god, bees and a cantankery going at it. Do I have Corster Nectar on board? Oh my god, that's like four swarms of bees. Yeah, I got one. Um, should I just start to shoot? I guess. The other bees are just leaving. Stony organ, please. Oh, they're back. Oh my god, there's more! Okay, those are leaving me alone. Why so many bees here? More! Here we go. It is said that the lakes at the top of Regent's Tears have curative properties. This rumor goes largely unconfirmed. The ground by the lakes is too boggy to land a locomotive. Instead, you must land on a sharp, slippery ledge lower down the falls. The walk up will be punishing. Sip from the waterfall. She waits for those who need her guidance. 79% chance of success. Let's do that. Follow the guide to the top of the tiers. A hooded woman, half concealed in the spray, waits by the waterfall. 
You are here for the region's lakes? She has a thick London accent. The woman leaps from ledge to foothold. She's sure-footed, apparently oblivious to the thundering roar of the waterfalls. It's treacherous work to keep up with her. When you finally reach the top, you help each other over the edge. Only now can you see that she is crying. She has wept endlessly for years. The tears run down grooves in her cheeks that have been worn there by the constant weeping. She gestures towards the water. Welcome. May the Regent's Lakes nourish you. The view from the top of the tears is dizzying. The forest is so large and you are so high that all perspective is lost. Only your locomotive, small as a matchbox, breaks the illusion of a mossy meadow inches from your feet. You step back from... You step back from drop? You step back from the drop? and turn to the lake. It's huge. You cannot make out any details of its far shore. Steam rises sluggishly from the surface. The water is warm. Immerse yourself in the lake and talk. Several young Londoners sit quietly on the bank, resting their feet in the steaming water. To be heard over the sound of the falls, you must sit equally close. The couple welcomes you warmly and all too easily slip into discussion of the family they hope for. Their accents reveal a scandalous class disparity. No wonder they're coy about their identities. Three salons to gossip. I'm pretty sure that like all the other stuff that you explore, like horrors and, and wonders that you can only explore once every once in a while. So don't think there's any point in trying again. I was heading down this way to go to Port Avon when I heard some really, really strange noises that I've never heard before, and I'm just coming upon it now, and I think this is the, uh, what did I have it marked in my notes as? Fungal monstrosity somewhere in the reach. I'm just going to check that off right now, and this one too, and the amiable vagabond, because uh, we just found it. Oh my god, oh, look at that thing. Its shots move very, very slowly. That is so cool looking. Colonized cantankery. Col oh, it's like a fungal, fungal monstrosity. Colonized by fungus. Ooh. Oh god, I got hit by one. Oh, they, they seek. Okay, we have it all to ourselves. <laughs> Yay. I just want to get a look at it. It's not attacking me for some weird reason. A change of heart. Oh, this is a settler that I picked up at um, Port Prosper a while ago. They want to sign on my ship. Another solution. Oh my god. This is all because I ate that weird meat at Lustrum that one time. It's the whole cannibal thing. Um, if I didn't have more than two supplies, I could eat them. He is fickle. No one would be surprised if he didn't arrive. You could solve his problem and supplement your dwindling supplies in one blow. <laughs> nah, you can join, buddy. Yeah, I see a bunch of... looks like Vulcan Tankery. I wonder why it's not trying to attack me. 
Just because I haven't shot it, I guess? It's really cool looking. Alright, I'm gonna shoot it now. Wonderful. Does it shoot out more and more as it's getting more damaged? <sighs> oh, no, I didn't mean to click anything. Palpitating mycological mass of fractured chitinous legs, frilled gills, and ruptured polyps. A growth of livid fungus has engulfed a small herd of cantankery. Now it is dying. The herd grumbles with one irritable, faltering voice. I try to render the fungus edible. Eating unprovenanced celestial fungus is, of course, a ticket to madness, infection, or a colorful death. But hopefully your cook can render it inert. Got two, two supplies out of it. Your cook is reasonably sure that if they cut the fungus into strips, hang it and smoke it for a fortnight, then fry it thoroughly, it will be digestible. He makes no predictions regarding its taste, though. I wonder what the other options were. wonder how often we'll see those things.